The action on this Martin is okay, but not great. I could bring the saddle down, but there's a problem. It's already as low as I'd want it to go, and the brake angle is already too shallow. I'd already slotted the bridge pin holes, and even that wasn't enough to increase the brake angle on such a low saddle, which still isn't low enough for optimal action. What's the solution? A neck reset and a taller saddle would be the best solution, but since we're on a budget, both financially and time-wise, we have to do something else. It's a very thick bridge, so I decided to route it down, which will expose more of the saddle and lower the strings behind the saddle, which will increase the brake angle. Putting down some protective padding and a template I made for this job years ago, I get my Bosch Cult trim router and PR011 plunge base, a standard eighth inch cutting bit, and get to it. I don't want to go too crazy here, but I need to take off enough material to make a difference. I'll sand all the contours back into the bridge by hand. The Kovacs sanding block is especially useful here. Then countersink the holes, re-slot the bridge, ream the bridge pin holes if necessary, string it up, and test it. I can't tell any difference with all these effects on. Nice. The brake angle not only looks much better than it did before, but the bridge looks better overall now that the saddle isn't buried so deeply in the slot. And it even sounds better. The synthesizer I used in that clip might have been a bit of a joke, but the effect that brake angle has on your tone is not a joke at all. And aside from tone, insufficient brake angle can also cause buzzing on individual strings, which people often mistake for fret problems or an issue with the truss rod adjustment. Slotting the bridge pin holes is the go-to option for that problem, but as you saw in this video, it's not always enough to increase the brake angle sufficiently. Just remember that the bridge itself acts like a brace, and by removing too much material, you might make the top more prone to bellying up, which is how the whole problem of high action on acoustics begins in the first place. That being said, shaving the top of the bridge down can be a safe and viable option in the right circumstances and breathe new life into an old and tired guitar. One of the best examples was this installation of power pins on an old acoustic. In the above picture, you can see that the brake angle is non-existent. What you can't see is that it was also impossible to secure the power pins firmly to the bridge with this much of an angle. The bottom picture is after I routed the bridge down just enough for the power pins to sit flat on the bridge, and you can see the dramatic increase in brake angle. It not only allowed me to successfully install the power pins and improve the tone, but got rid of the annoying buzz on the strings, which was the worst problem. Lack of downward pressure on the saddle can, if it's extreme enough, cause the strings to buzz and rattle against the saddle after being picked, making all sorts of inexplicable noises that seem to happen whether you're playing the string open or fretted anywhere on the neck. As a final note, the actual original purpose of the main job in this video was to prevent excessive string breakage. One theory on acoustics is that a lack of brake angle allows the string to move back and forth on the saddle too much when picked, which gradually wears away the string and eventually leads to a complete break at the saddle. Whether that theory is correct or not, there are so many benefits to correcting poor brake angle that doing so is always justified. At the very least, by slotting the bridge pin holes, and as you've seen here, routing the bridge down under select circumstances. Re-angling the neck and installing a taller saddle might be the best solution, but it's rarely an affordable option, especially on guitars where the cost of a neck reset will exceed the value of the instrument. Sometimes you have to compromise and select the best option from a group of less than ideal options. Not a bad life lesson if you think about it. For more tips and tricks you're not going to find anywhere else, stay tuned for more Guitar Everything, right here on Guitar MD.